Hi everyone, Lisa Sainz Peck from Spellbound Miniatures here and welcome to a very, very short tutorial for my patrons only this month in March 21. Um, we're doing um, hopefully a helpful little tool for you. I'm going to do both the SVG so you can cut it on your Cricut and an STL file if you have a 3D printer. And if you don't have one yet, save the STL file anyway. You never know, you might get one soon. They're certainly uh, very handy and it's becoming a really, really useful um, piece of equipment to have. So you'll have seen um, mm, on the dresser, certainly, the medieval dresser, this tiny little cream tea and I'll put a better photo up on the screen of it close up. I made that, as you will be able to guess, from a print and cut file. But I kind of, even though it's handy to do print and cut, I don't mind cutting circles and you get more on a sheet if you don't have to be within the Cricut confines of that um, maximum print and cut area. So. Um, I just print them all out anyway and you'll get the PNG for this. These are just some practice ones. It's so easy to get um, plate sort of patterns on Google and save them as a PNG. So I've done these for you. You can do whatever style and size and design you like and we've got sort of a larger, what would be more of a dinner plate and in 12 scale and a slightly more so smaller side plate. And what we're doing today is we have made a former, a plate former. Mm, where are we? Can you tell I haven't done this for a while? There we go. So we've got a bottom and a top. And I don't know if you can see, one goes out and the other one goes in. So the one that goes in is the foot of the plate. And then the one that goes out, where are we? Uh, presses down on top and pushes to make the shape. And I don't know if this is gonna come out either. It's very subtle. Can you see that? It's very subtle, but because you're making this yourself, you can make it deeper or more shallow. So what I did, and it's very simple, um, we'll go over to Design Space, I'll talk you through the shapes, but it's very sort of simple, you just have to, there's two graduating layers, I don't know if you'll even be able to see that on there, whoa, there's so much, I've got so much light in here now, there are just two layers, I don't know if that's even coming out, there yeah you could just about see that S to try and get a sloping gradient okay so here we are in design space and you'll see it's a very simple file essentially if we ungroup it the three more to the right are the i'd say the recessed ones to make the foot of the plate and the three to the left are to sort of the top bit and these are the sticky out bits and if you see, they're just slightly different size. This is in inches, 0.65, and the smaller one is 0.622. So you'll see that when you stack them on top of each other. And essentially, if I change the colour of this one, just so that you can see it, when you put it on top, and if it's arranged to the front, you'll see there's just a slight sort of outline and then they both would go onto the larger one and you just glue them like that if you want to make a deeper impression cut more um i at least cut when you do your first cut this far duplicate both of these anyway um, it's much easier to play around with them when they're in front of you physically so just do edit copy edit paste and then 
um, I'd print or cut a few more of those as well to make it stiffer and thicker once it's glued and set up. So essentially you'll glue several layers of the circles and then however many of these you want to make the impression that you want. You can't really see that but you get the idea. And then you want to make sure you kind of do the same opposite thing on the bottom so that there's a big enough hole for the sticky out bit to go into. Highly technical terms here. So again this is an inch round. Oh they're both an inch round but it's the inside which I can't measure in design space. The inside is slightly you can just see it's just it's just a little bit larger on one than the other and then these will fit on there exactly because that is an inch as well so this is for an inch diameter plate which would be a foot dinner plate um, and again if you want to cut some more of all of them and it's much easier just to when you're cutting to cut several play around with them and make sort of higher and lower layers it did work really well for me um, you'll see that I kind of did a shallow one and then a deeper one so it starts to form it then you put it in the deeper one you can also use a ball tool and reinforce the curve if you want to so um, it's up to you to play around with it really I just use normal tacky glue and I did press them you could cut a top and a bottom out of chipboard if you wanted to make it much stiffer but I quite liked the fact that it was flexible it helped me to squeeze and pinch um, as I went round so you'll see that in a minute so let's go back over to the bench oh and the other thing is just make sure when you cut these ones they're going to leave a circle inside on the mat and I suggest you actually initially leave these circles inside on the mat so you don't confuse them with these circles over here so remove the outer rings leave those inner circles on the mat or remember to throw them away or keep them to one side as you take them off the mat so you don't confuse them with these ones okay let's go back over to the bench and we'll see how they work so until my camera's moving I haven't been able to fix it in place it's moving further across the desk um, and that's the SVG but what we also did was replicate this as an STL and we printed it on our new resin printer and there oh wrong way light balance is terrible there we go you can see that there because we printed it we could print the slope whereas we've had to use layers of craft board to create a slope so this was much more effective and um, it's sturdier because it's made of resin so but I did the plate for these cream teas was with the um, craft board version and once you've got um, the layers that you like and you probably can't see this I've only written it on in pencil I've written one oh there we go one and two you think I wouldn't haven't done this before um, one is the sort of one layer of craft board um, and two is I've got an extra layer on actually that's three layers two is three layers and one is the two layers to get just get you need two layers to get the shape so hopefully you're following this <laughs> but it's up to you as many as you um, use as many as you like the deeper you get you can crease the paper slightly but this is just copy paper um, you could use a thicker paper uh, I just did what I had you could use try and use craft board it might be slightly too thick so all we do what I ended up doing was with the the first which is number one the first former I used for two layers of craft board I used that to start off the shaping forming 
and literally just I kind of I developed it as pinch and squeeze so I pinch the end and then sort of roll and squeeze like that and then work my way round so that to try and stop it puckering too much or creasing too much just work your way round and squeeze and squeeze and squeeze and then if you've gone for a, it you do get I don't know if we'll be able to see that you do get some shaping with just the regular two layers I'll put it into the next one which has got an extra layer and then do the same thing again make sure it's all lined up and then do the same pinch it to sort of support the edge of the plate and then squeeze in to create the dip so just do that all the way around and the beauty of this is you can create because you've got the SVG you can create any size so that is that one and there's a little bit of puckering there but I wasn't really paying attention to what I'm doing and then on the back you can see can we see that there yeah so that was just done with the the craft board SGV, SVG one exactly the same method for the 3D printed one but this is sturdier and it's got an actual slope rather than two layers of craft board at, at different circumferences so I felt that this gave a better um, shape so this is the other pattern I just cut these circles by hand so I'll use the uh, 3D printed one now just same thing squeeze and squeeze there might be a way of softening the paper to help it form shape better that has wrinkled a little but I wasn't really trying very hard so that's what we've got for you today and the other thing I thought it would be fun is to roll out some polymer clay preferably on a pasta machine to get a really even layer um, and try and press some polymer clay plates in this um, I don't know probably you would need to use a release agent either cling film on it or corn flour or whatever you prefer to use um, and then you would just obviously squeeze it enough to make the shape but not so much that it comes out at the edges so um, once we've done that all I did was I found with the copy paper you can probably see it on this one it just got a little transparent um, even too transparent save for porcelain so I painted the back with white acrylic paint that stopped the light going through and then I did a coat of UV resin on them um, to make them nice and shiny Will it focus yeah you can see how shiny that is and then just got an eye pin and bent the top Put it through and glued it on um, and that's that so the stl file again we just did it i think it's easier to print the patterns you're going to use first then you can literally measure them um, to see how big they are and then you can cut or scale your SVG before you cut it or if you're on your slicing software change the dimensions so you can actually make the former to fit the plate otherwise if you do this first you could be trying to print it and it comes out slightly different so that's the way around I did it printed it first made the formers second and um, there was something else I was going to say oh yes so the cream tea was just 
I think it's champagne coloured Fimo for the for the scone and um, you know do that thing with brushing dry brushing pastels over the clotted cream was white with a bit of yellow mixed in and then I did use some chopped up red mixed in with liquid Fimo and some red alcohol ink to make the jam oh let's see if we can get so that was super simple but quite effective I won't show you my strawberries because they're nowhere near as nice I don't think but they're the first time I've made strawberries so um, that was that hopefully um, you'll have fun making these um, and please do post any that you made we can't really give settings for these on the 3d printer because it depends on the resin you use the type of printer the LCD screen that you use and the slicing software you use but as we get to know it more we'll try and help you more um, but this was printed in Ella Gumar's ABS like resin and the color white so there we go thank you for joining me today and I'll see you soon mm -hmm.